Hi there, it's Tom Pullen here and welcome to the first video in this new series called Inno News where we're going to learn about how to innovate by looking at the latest launches from some of the most innovative companies in the world. And today we're going to look at Apple Watch. So I've just finished watching Apple's keynote event from this week. And whilst it might not have been as groundbreaking as the launch of the original iPhone, it did contain some amazing stuff specifically on Apple Watch. And why do I like what they're doing? I like it because they're demonstrating some of the key success factors for how to drive growth through innovation. And I'm going to share with you on this video my top 10. And we're going to start with purpose. Here at Apple, we feel a deep responsibility to keep innovating, to continue making products that enrich people's lives in meaningful ways. So when Tim Cook started with this, I thought we were going to be in for a long video full of purpose washing. After all, any CEO could have said these words pretty much in any industry. However, when they got down to the specifics of the innovations on Apple Watch, it became very clear that they were going to walk the talk with their purpose and they were actually going to deliver something meaningful specifically on health. With Apple Watch Series 6, you can measure your blood oxygen right from your wrist. The new health sensor in Series 6 shines red and infrared light onto your wrist and measures the amount of light reflected back. Advanced algorithms use this data to calculate the color of your blood, which indicates the amount of oxygen present. And Watch OS 7 now uses your motion and heart rate to measure a lower range of VO2 max values. Now, the American Heart Association recommends routinely assessing cardio fitness levels, and VO2 max is the most accurate way to capture this. The problem is, it's usually only measured in specialty clinics. Well, Watch OS 7 can now measure a full range of VO2 max which is a powerful predictor of your overall health. And to enable future medical discoveries, we're launching three new health research studies to learn how longitudinal blood oxygen measurements, along with other health metrics from Apple Watch, can help manage conditions that affect the heart and lungs. For me, this is serious and brilliant stuff. You know, empowering a consumer to be able to measure their VO2 max or their blood oxygen level without any specialist equipment whenever and wherever they want is truly groundbreaking. And I also love the fact that they're using the data from Apple Watch to help further academic and scientific research. So look at your latest innovations and the degree to which they live and breathe your purpose in a visible and tangible way and explore whether you could go even further with future innovation projects. So the second success factor we're going to look at is stories. My name is James. We were sitting in the living room and I glanced down at my watch because it kind of vibrated. It flashed increased heart rate. By the time we got to the hospital, my heart rate was 206. And she said, sir, you're going into cardiac arrest. I was 26. I wanted my life. And I didn't want my life just for me, but I wanted it for my family. I'm thankful to still be here and I'm thankful for that device that saved me. So in the previous section, they told us that Apple Watch was good for health. But in the clips that we've just seen, they actually prove it. And they do so by allowing individuals to tell their real life authentic stories, which is quite a disruptive approach for a tech giant, right? Storytelling is such a powerful tool in innovation, not only for building credibility, but also for connecting with your consumers, your customers and users in a deeper, more human way. 
So think about which of your customers could best testify to the power and benefits of your innovation and how could you collaborate with them in order to get them to tell their story to other people in a really engaging way. So now let's start to look at the Apple Watch product itself and the next success factor is customization. The GMT face shows multiple time zones at once and takes into account where you are. The count up face lets you start tracking elapsed time from any given point. And inspired by classic racing watches, the Chronograph Pro face features multiple time scales, including a tachymeter to measure speed based on time traveled over a set distance. In the typograph face, numerals can be displayed in three custom type styles and four different scripts. Every combination is tailored to fit the face perfectly. We also collaborated with the artist Jeff McFetridge to create a unique piece of art for your watch. There are millions of combinations and a different one animates when you raise your wrist. The Memoji face brings your favorite Memoji to your watch. Each one moves and reacts to your touch. And with the stripes face, you can show your pride in who you are, support your favorite team, or even match what you're wearing. We're so proud to add to the legacy of Apple Watch faces with this new collection. Customization has clearly been a mega trend for years, but I really feel that Apple have nailed it here. You know, enabling consumers to be able to amplify their identity, their mood, their passion points through these new fun faces features. So how could you enable customers to customize your product or service to give them an experience that truly feels unique to them? The next success factor we're going to look at is co-creation. In watchOS 7, we also gave developers new tools to build even more specialized watch faces. So if you're into surfing, there's a watch face for that. With apps like Dawn Patrol to check surf conditions, or if you're into photography, there's a watch face for that. With apps like Lumi to help you track the sun's position. Or if you're a healthcare provider, there's a watch face for that. With apps like Notable to see your upcoming appointments. So as well as the new faces that they developed, they also reached out to their ecosystem of developers to develop some specific faces for some specific targets, which is a very smart strategy because they've created additional value without spending lots of time and money of their own. So how could you capitalize on the people, the startups, the companies within your ecosystem in order to increase the value, credibility and relevance for your innovation? The next success factor we're going to look at is the power of now. Automatic hand washing detection recognizes the motion and sound when washing your hands and encourages you to continue for the recommended 20 seconds. So I'm guessing this was probably pretty easy from a technical point of view. And this probably wasn't something that customers even asked for. But for me, this is Apple showing that it's capable of innovating fast in order to respond to what's happening in the real life of their customers now. So what additional functionality or benefit could you add to your product or service now, not in 18 months time, in order to concretely help your customers during this exceptional period? The next success factor we're going to look at is design. The Solo Loop is remarkably simple. No clasp, no buckle, no overlapping parts, just one continuous piece. Made from custom liquid silicone, the Solo Loop is stretchable so you can easily slip it on and off your wrist. It's available in a range of sizes so you can find your most comfortable fit. Series 6 is our most colorful lineup ever. There's a new blue aluminum case, this updated classic gold stainless steel finish, a new gray black stainless steel called Graphite, and for the first time, a stunning new Apple Watch product red. So Apple here have basically reimagined and reinvented the watch strap, which clearly hadn't been touched in decades. And what they've done is work both on aesthetics 
and also comfort. And as with all great design, therefore, they're working with form and function, style and substance. And not only that, because they continue to propose new colors and new finishes on Apple Watch to continually bring new news and excitement to their customers. So what element of your product or service has never been challenged or reinvented? And how could you reimagine something that does the job better? And how could you bring new colors, new materials, new sensations to your product or service in order to bring freshness and excitement to your customers? The next success factor we're going to look at is sustainability. Beginning last year, our aluminum watch cases are made with 100% recycled aluminum. And for Series 6, we're now using 100% recycled rare earth elements and tungsten in the Taptic engine. And we go to great lengths to make sure our products are free of harmful chemicals. Like all of our products, Apple Watch is free of BFR, PVC, beryllium, and mercury. And the display glass is made without arsenic. And all of the fiber in our packaging comes from recycled sources or responsibly managed forests. So whilst by their own admission, Apple have still got some way to go on sustainability, they are clearly integrating it into the conception and design of their innovations. This isn't just words, this is concrete and tangible actions. While sustainability is often not the primary reason for purchasing a product or service, it is now effectively a mandatory part of any mix. So make sure that you integrate sustainability into the very start of your next innovation project. The next success factor we're going to look at is affordability. The second thing we're doing to make Apple Watch available to even more people is to create a new model that combines elements of Series 6 design with the most essential features of Apple Watch, all at a more affordable price. We call it Apple Watch SE. Apple Watch SE starts at just $279. In addition, we're announcing Apple Card financing for Apple Watch so customers can easily pay across 24 monthly payments. The launch of Apple Watch SE is a great example of Apple clearly and explicitly innovating with a new product in order to gain market penetration amongst a more price sensitive audience. So what new, more affordable variants of your product or service could you launch in order to broaden your customer base? And remember that just because it's more affordable doesn't give you an excuse for poor design or poor performance. The penultimate success factor we're going to look at is a focus on the purchaser. Family setup enables greater independence for your kids or older parents and you have the comfort of knowing they're just a call away. You get the safety and communication features that technology can deliver in a device that can be managed responsibly. For example, you can specify which contacts your kids can communicate with when using messages and more. And you can set up automatic location notifications. So whether it's grandma's house, school, or basketball practice, you'll get the reassurance your child is exactly where you expect them to be. To help them stay active, Kids can now track move minutes and use all the other great features of activity and workout in a way that works best for them. Whether they're learning at home or in the classroom, the new school time mode helps kids stay focused with do not disturb, restricted interaction, and this distinctive look, which teachers or parents can recognize at a glance. Apple is clearly targeting the kids segment here, but what's interesting is that their way to do it is by speaking directly to the purchaser, the parents, and explaining all the benefits to them. Remember that in many categories, the purchaser and the end user are not the same person. And so innovating with the purchaser in mind can also be a very powerful strategy. So what are the key pain points for your purchasers and how could you innovate to address them better? Our last success factor that we're going to look at is services. 
Introducing Apple Fitness Plus, a new service for Apple Watch designed to inspire you to get fit and stay fit. With Fitness Plus, you simply choose the workout you want to do from the catalog of videos on your iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV. And when you start the video, it automatically starts the correct workout in your Apple Watch workout app. And it sends those metrics in real time right to the screen you're viewing the workout. So you have all of your data on your wrist and on the screen in front of you. And if you're also an Apple Music subscriber, it's easy to save the playlist from Fitness Plus and then listen to them later in Apple Music, whether you're working out or not. Apple have clearly been watching the recent boom in home fitness solutions like Peloton and thinking that they want a bit of that action. And why not? After all, they've already got credibility in the sports space through their partnership with Nike and it's fully aligned with their strategy around health. What I love about this is that Apple's products are right at the heart of the service experience. So Apple Watch in delivering the metrics and Apple Music in providing the soundtrack, i.e. this new service that they've created is not separate from or on top of their products, but fully integrated within them. So what new services could you create where your core products are at the heart of the user experience? So that's the 10 success factors that really inspire me from the innovations that Apple have just announced on Apple Watch. Clearly, you don't have to deploy all of them or all at the same time, but do try and use a couple of them in order to increase your innovation performance. After all, if they work for one of the biggest companies in the world, chances are they'll also work for you. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel for future videos on innovation. Thanks a lot for your support and see you next time.